Department of the United States, the United States Coast Guard, and the Great Foundation. Please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation. We are one of the most honorable and safe visitors. Uh, everybody hear me all right? I uh, really want to thank everybody for coming today. It's really good of you to be here. Um, when I think about our dad, about a thousand stories come to mind. And uh, you've all been here for quite a while, so I'm only going to tell just a few of those stories in an attempt to try and describe well the man we're here to honor and remember today. Um, my dad's childhood and adolescence were pretty rough. Um, he had some good, happy times early in his life before his parents got divorced. Um, they lived in northern Illinois, and uh, his mom's side of the family had a lake home in Wakanda, Illinois, and my, my Aunt Elaine was telling me recently how much fun they would have there during the summers. But after, after their parents got divorced, his mom moved the family to Miami. And uh, that's, that's when things got really hard on dad. One, one story that I've heard told a thousand times, um, never by my dad, but by, by his brother and sister, was when, when they were little, they were at their grandmother's house and um, they were excited to go to the new Tarzan movie that had come out recently. And apparently they were so excited they decided that it was a good idea to play on the refrigerator. And this is the 50s, so refrigerators were like tanks. And uh, my dad was swinging on the door, my uncle was up on top of the refrigerator, and eventually it, it tipped over and created a humongous mess. Well, when their mother came home and saw this, despite the fact that all the kids were really to blame. My dad got all the blame. Uh, he, he took the beating and he was sent to his room and wasn't allowed to go to the Tarzan movie as extra punishment. Unfortunately, there were a lot of stories like that, as my aunt tells it, Joe, Joe Ed's the whipping boy. Um, now, I don't want to dwell on that. The, the reason I, I, I start there is because when I think about those kind of stories, I'm utterly amazed at what a good person dad turned out to be. He could have been nasty and mean because of the way he was raised, and he was the opposite. He spent most of his life turning the other cheek. Hardships like his childhood were just a fact of life, and you just get through things like that. He didn't wallow in that kind of negativity. 
And he, he, didn't, he didn't dwell on, on things like that. Um, I remember him often telling all of us boys, uh, this house may not be a palace, and it definitely wasn't, uh, but you'll always have a roof over your head, there'll always be love here, and you'll always have good food to eat, which we did. He, wor he worked very hard to keep a roof over our head. Um, uh, he worked at Northern uh, since 1967. Um, he often took side jobs uh, to supplement his income. And with the kind of skill that he had with plaster and tile and concrete, I guarantee you he could have charged people a lot more than what he did for the work that he did, but, but he was very generous with his talents that way. More than anything, he worked hard to make sure that all of us kids had at least a chance at success. Um, there was one job that he took, actually several jobs, helping Clark Lambros when Clark's Landing was being built. And Dad did a ton of tile work and concrete work in there. And he either did it for free or very much on the cheap, mainly so when it opened, Ryan and Pat would have jobs. Uh, that, that was important to him. Uh, he also valued education greatly. Um, when, when he was young, he, he dropped out of high school to join the Coast Guard as early as he legally could uh, to get away from the family situation. But it was very important to him when he was here at Marquette to go back to school, to night school. And you may have seen some of the pictures with his cap and gown. He, he graduated from high school. And he took a lot of classes at Northern, um, a lot of them designed to help him be a better negotiator <laughs> as a union president. Uh, it was very important to him, education. A uh, couple of quick stories. He made sure for my work study, going into my freshman year in college, that I was assigned to his work crew. And we tarred, the dorms had flat roofs at that time. And our job most of the summer was to tar the roofs. Hottest nastiest, hardest work I've ever done in my entire life. And towards the end of the summer, Dad asked me, what do, what do you think of the work that we're doing? And I probably swore a blue streak and told him exactly what I thought. It stunk. And, and I'll never forget, he said, remember that when you're taking classes. Get good grades and graduate. You'll never have to do this kind of work the rest of your life. He told Pat something very similar. He and Pat were working on a pole barn for Paul Kaido. And uh, Pat kind of enthusiastically said, Dad, this, this, this is the kind of work I want to do when I grow up. And, and Dad said, do me a favor, go to college so you can be the boss and you can tell people how to do this job and you don't have to break your back late into life like, like I have to. He was a good teacher that way. Um, last but not least, anybody who knows Dad knows he loved to cook. He loved to feed people. He had a killer spaghetti sauce recipe that made fantastic lasagna, spaghetti. And anybody who worked at Northern in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s knew that one of the best places in town to get food was Joe's Kitchen in the break room. And eventually, a donation jar was put out so people could help purchase all the food that he was making. But he insisted when students would try and put money in there that they were to eat for free. That, that was, again, how generous he was. He was also very kind. He's the kind of guy at Northern that people to this day still talk about, I remember your dad. He always had an ear if I was having a bad day. He's a very good man. So much so that he started a scholarship in his own name in 2001, and I guarantee you he didn't get rich working at Northern. But the idea that he couldn't really afford to start a scholarship was not the point for him. It was real important to give back to the institution that put a roof over our heads, gave bachelor's degrees to myself and Pat and Jared, and to this day gives Ryan a job that was very important to my dad. 
So the idea that he couldn't afford it didn't really cross his mind. And whether, whether or not he read this verse from the Bible, he lived it. This is Hebrews 13, 16. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Joe Healy never forgot to do good. He sacrificed a lot to share his time and talents and treasure with all sorts of people. And I'm sure that God is pleased. Love you, Dad. Thanks. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Joseph died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Joseph, whom you have called to the journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may lead, you may lead him to the true homeland, to delight in his everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. 
Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death shepherd so nothing shall I want I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love I walk by the quiet waters of peace shepherd me O oh God beyond my From death into life Though I should wander the valley of death I fear no evil For you are at my side Your rod and your staff my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love, of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my Beyond my fear, from death into life. Good 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin, for a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself. So that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to offer my prayers and condolences to all of Joe's uh, sons, to Mike and Ryan and Patrick and Jerry and Brandon, to his sister Elaine. All of his family and friends gather this Mass to honor him. Joe, as you heard from uh, Mike's eulogy, is certainly will be remembered for his hard work, his generosity and kindness towards others. He had a quiet and humble demeanor to him. He liked to lend a helping hand from his many talents. You know, he is very similar to his namesake. St. Joseph, we remember often in scripture, we translate as carpenter, but the real word actually means jack of all trades. 
So another person who, through the work of their hands, shared and was a co-creator with God. Joe also spent time with his sons hunting and fishing. And one of them reminded me of a very unique Christmas uh, that they had one time where he, he gave all the boys scrap lumber, nails, and hammers, and they created their own gifts. Joe was a proud union representative, NMU employee, and an avid sports fan. In our first reading from the Book of Wisdom, we're comforted that we hear that the souls of the just are in the very hand of God. These souls will suffer no more torment, but rather at peace because God has drawn them to himself. But whenever we're made righteous, it's not something that we do ourselves, but rather it's through, done through someone else pouring out their blood, their very life for us. And therefore the bonds that we forge in this life forged through Christ, who is eternal, they never end. Even in death, we are still joined now with Joe. Whenever our relationships are grounded in God, we know that he, who is the basis of all love, continues those ties. Joe has impacted our lives in many ways and will be greatly missed. And yet we take courage in this wonderful gospel in the 14th chapter of John, that our God has already been expecting us so much so that he prepared a place for us. But what do we need to do to inherit it? The first is that we have to learn how to trust our Lord. Every single relationship that we have in life, be it a coworker, a friend, family member, trust must underline that, the relationship. We see that lack of trust there with Adam and Eve. When they sin, they run away from their God. It says that well, one time, though, they were naked without shame, no excuses, no distance between them and God. We have to stand before our Lord again with our defenses down, without offering those excuses. We have to trust him because he already knows us through and through. And yet in our brokenness, he still calls us. The second is we have to learn to receive heaven, eternal life, and salvation as unmerited gifts. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. See, that's really a gift with our own hands. We know the creative things that Joe could do with his hands and the motives of why he would do them. How much more when you extrapolate that out from the creator of the heavens and earth, out of an infinite love and creativity, could he make something even grander for each one of us? Think of the many gifts he has prepared in the past. A garden for Adam and Eve, a promised land for the Jews, a womb for his son to be born into our world, prepared to give his son's life for ours, and now preparing a heavenly home, not for visitors, but for new family members. The third is that we have to wait for our Lord to guide us to heaven. Admittedly, every one of us, when we sit at a funeral, we ponder our own mortality. We're nervous like Thomas. Thomas said, Master, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? But our God didn't send us a map. He didn't give us verbal directions and say, you'll make it there under your own merits and talents. But rather, he said that he's going to send his son to guide us there by the hand. Jesus' response to Thomas and to Joe and to each one of us this day is, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. The fourth is that we are shielded from danger whenever we follow Christ. After all, he is like a good parent. Jesus famously told Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. In other words, if Christ is the way, we always have to check if we're going in the correct direction. If Christ is the truth, have we ever set aside that truth for one that we subscribe to on our own as being the own center of truth? If Christ is life, why do we pursue so many counterfeits with great passion? Power, pleasure, honor, wealth. Jesus said, whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. If God is already dwelling within us, there's really nothing to fear when it comes to death. It won't be a rough transition but rather a graduation to a fuller expression of life and joy than we could ever hope to understand at this point. 
That's why St. Paul said, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has prepared for those who love him. And lastly, to go to heaven, we need a sense of peace within us. You know, peace is often defined in our world as the absence of something external, be it strife or war or hardship. But biblically, that's not the sense of peace. It's something internal to us. It's a presence of someone, that would, namely Jesus. That's why the world cannot give it, he said. Psalm 139 is probably the most beautiful one describing that presents our God in a timeless fashion. It says he knew us when he knit us in our mother's womb. Every moment of our lives, his right hand is upon us. It says he knows every one of our days before they come to be. That means wherever we wander, whether it be farther from God the Father, we're going right into the loving arms of God the Son. And above all, that means we have a God who pursues us and wants us to come home. For along with these simple gifts of bread and wine this day at this Mass, that we're going to offer over to God to become so much more. It's our prayer now to offer over the soul of Joe so that he can become so much more. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend the soul of Joe and ask you to prepare for him an everlasting dwelling in your heavenly home. Please stand. Our response after each petition will be, Lord, hear our prayer. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all of his people, both the living and the dead, as we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Joseph received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Joseph was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of our friends and members of our families that have died, grant them an everlasting home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the men and the women of our nation's armed services, especially those who have paid the ultimate price for our safety and freedom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Joe seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Joseph, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. be seated or kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, our Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Louis and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity <clears throat> your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. <clears throat> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Joseph, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yeah.
please kneel or be seated. For the distribution of Holy Communion, for our friends joining us from a different Christian denomination or perhaps a Catholic no longer practicing, I do invite you forward in any of the communion lines for a blessing to simply cross your arms over your chest. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. They should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up so I can walk on seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. Me up to more than I can be. You raise me up to more than I can be. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our brother Joseph may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Immediately following this Mass, you're invited over to the Father Gothier Hall, where the reception will be. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Joseph and have now come to last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Joseph again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with the faith of Jesus Christ.
into your hands, Father, mercies, we commend our brother Joseph. In the sure and certain hope, together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you have bestowed upon Joseph in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Joseph to his place of rest. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Go forth, the Mass is in.